Hello everyone, welcome to Neo Scavenger. This is a turn-based survival game. It's currently in beta and available on Steam Early Access as well as a few other sites, so I'll have links in the description to where you can check those out. It's also got a really hard learning curve, so I've gone ahead and played it for a few hours just to familiarize myself with the basics. And there's two quick things I want to say to frame your expectations going in. Okay, first thing, it's a really damn good game. I haven't played it for that long, but I already can tell that. It's really damn good and has an incredible amount of depth to it. Second thing I want to say. The interface is horrible. It's really bad, and it's a confusing mess. So don't freak out about the menus and the interface. I'll try to explain it to kind of ease you into it. It's going to be really intimidating at first, probably, if you haven't played it. But it's actually not too bad. It's just... It's just confusing at first. Okay. Let's get into it. So, new game. Alright, you could ignore all the stuff on the left here. None of that matters at the moment. I'm just creating my character, so it's just this stuff that matters. Okay. So, all of these blue things up here are positive traits, uh, positive skills and abilities that I can take. So I get the hacking ability, medic, hiding, and so on. Now, these basic human... I suppose that's called a trait. These uh, basic human traits have no negative effects, and each one opens up the ability to add in whatever skill and ability you want inside of there. So basically, you get four freebies. Just for being human, you get four slots. However, if you would like more, you can select from these negative effects to open up another positive slot. So, for example, Insomniac. This is a bad thing, so now I'm going to have trouble sleeping. However, now that's opened up the ability to add in a new positive thing. So you get four freebies for these basic human slots that have no negatives. And if you want to kind of choose some negatives and try to offset it or just get something different with another positive, you can go ahead and add these in. So let me choose my four, whatever four basic ones I want, and then I'll decide whether I want some negative effects and what I'm going to do to try to you know offset that and make it worth it. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what all of these do exactly, what precisely all of them do, but I know some of them. So I'm definitely going to want to take Athletic. It allows me to move more. It allows me to move more... It allows me to do more things per turn. Because remember, it is turn-based. Pretty important, I like that. I also want to take Botany, because starving is something you're really going to have to deal with. It's not going to matter in the short term. In the short term, you're going to worry about simply staying warm. But in the long term, you really need food, obviously. That's kind of a, a given, isn't it? And finding water is pretty easy. And actually, it's really easy. It'd be pretty hard to die of thirst, as a matter of fact. However, food is a big problem. So living off the land is really important, at least in the early game. I'm not sure about the later game. And without botany, when you go to find, say, wild berries or mushrooms or something like that, without the botany skill, you won't know whether they're poisonous or not. Which basically means you can't eat them. You can, of course, but you're pretty much bound to at some point eat poison food, and then you're probably going to die. So yeah, if you want to safely eat plants, and eating is extremely important, you're going to want to go with something like botany. You could also use trapping to kind of go for animals. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Okay. Eagle Eye is nice, allows you to see one hex further. It's pretty good. In fact, I might take that. And... Uh, tough or strong? So strong allows you to carry more. And melee attacks do more damage, can create obstacles in combat. Let's go for that. Damn it. <laughs> Fit in there! <clears throat> there we go. Okay, I want more. So, oh, and you can see that there's some abilities that are mutually exclusive. So, for example, Myopia can see one hex less than normal. That is basically the offset of Eagle Eye, which allows you to see one hex further. So if you take Eagle Eye, you can't have Myopia. Myopia. So that's why those are grayed out. Same with Feeble and Strong. Mutually exclusive. Okay, so Metabolism. Food and water intake rates increased, healing rates slightly increased, so I'm going to use up more food and more water. I'm okay with that, so let's get another slot. And what do I want? 
Hmm. I mean, all of these are good, obviously. Not sure if I need melee. I mean, I already have strong, which increases the damage of my melee attacks. Obviously, that would make it any uh, even better, but I kind of just want to avoid combat altogether if I can. Yeah, ranged increases your chance of hitting with a ranged weapon. However, in the early game, actually getting a ranged weapon is extremely unlikely. In my two hours, I only found one ranged weapon, and that was a gun. And I never actually found any ammo for it, so it was completely useless. Hmm. Wouldn't mind electrician or mechanic. That could come in handy. See, some of these abilities are useful kind of always and in general, and others are only useful in very specific circumstances. So things like strong and botany and athletic and eagle eye, these are very general skills that are always good. Things like electrician and mechanic are more situationally useful. Like lockpicking sounds super cool, but I've only come across like two things in my entire time that are actually locked. So, eh. Not sure how much it's worth it. I'm going to go with trapping. For a reason that you're about to see. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. You're about to see what I'm going to do with that. It's going to be fun, trust me. Okay, Insomniac. Difficulty staying asleep, and sleep is less beneficial. Eh, what the hell. Let's go with that. I want a lot of abilities. I want all of them. Alright, so what's the next one that I want? Hmm. One more. Tough. Higher pain threshold. <laughs> and I get the ability to headbutt in combat. That's pretty cool. I kind of want, like, mechanic or electrician, though. Hmm. Eh. I'm gonna go with tough. I'm gonna be a badass. Right. So I'm, ath I'm an athletic, strong, tough person with really good eyesight, good knowledge of botany, and I'm excellent at trapping. In other words, I'm like the coolest person to ever exist in the history of the known universe. Sweet. Let's go. Okay. Once again, don't be overwhelmed. So this is your little view of kind of what's going on, and here's the description of what's going on, and ignore the other stuff for now. You wake up disoriented, slumped over the base of an empty cryosleep pod, still damp from cryofluid. The thick dust from the floor clings to your skin, leaving a clean spot on the ground, where a large 05 is painted. Across the room, there's an open door to the hallway, and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, an unearthly scream erupts from down the hall, beyond the doorway. Something is coming. Fast. Okay, so these are my four options. It's very awkward looking the way these options are presented, but here's the four different things I can do. So there's, there's, I can simply jump out the window. That doesn't use any sp specific skill, or I can use any one of these three skills that I've just selected for my character. I can use my knowledge of plants to solve the situation. Or athletic, or strong. So I'm going to prepare to fight it. Since I want to be a badass, I'm going to be a badass. I'm going to fight the thing that just made the unearthly scream because it's freaking awesome. So let's do it. You steal your nerves and decide to take this thing down, whatever it is. As you assume a defensive stance, it bursts into the room. The beast stands on his hind legs like a man, but has the appearance of a ragged predatory dog. It looks right at you, shrieks, and lunges. It connects with a force that jars you both, and the dog man actually has to step back to keep its balance. Taking advantage of his distraction, you knock him to the ground and grab his throat. His claws tear into your flesh as you crush his windpipe with every ounce of strength you have. Moments later, he stops moving. You realize it cost you some nasty wounds. But at least you're alive. Fuck yeah. Player's upper chest was slashed. Player's upper chest was battered. So I'm taking a little bit of damage, but I just killed a freaking dog man. With a rush of adrenaline fading, you turn your attention back to this strange room. You should probably finish up here, in case there are more of those things. Okay. Here's the character screen. I am going to do something with the Dogman corpse, but I can't do it yet, because the interface is super awkward. But I'll do that later. In the meantime... 
I'm going to take these shards and I'm going to put them in my hand so I can use them as, I don't know, defense, I suppose. I don't think I'm going to have to defend myself in the next 20 seconds, but it doesn't hurt to have it. So at the moment, at the moment, literally the only thing on me is a wrist, uh, a wrist strap right here labeled Philip Kindred. A bronze talisman on a braided leather string. And my hospital gown. And of course, the shards that I just put in my hand. So that's all I have. So like this up here, this is a backpack slot of some sort, which I don't currently have and all of that. So I have pretty much nothing at the moment. Okay. You're standing in cryos... In... what? I think I should say the. You're standing in the cryostasis room? Though it looks like you might have been the only survivor. Alright, I'm not going to climb out the window just yet. Let's search the console for records. You check the console for any patient info and come across three records. Tank number one. Anton Blubber. <laughs> nice last name. Committed 2012. 11-11. Emergency contact. Okay. Tank number five. Philip Kindred. That's me. Committed 2019. Okay, that's relatively late compared to these other people. I don't actually know what year it currently is, though. No data. Billing info, a Detroit Savings Bank. It's weird. Tank number six, Lloyd Blankcheck. Okay. All right, well, there's nothing else to do right here. Let's leave, climb out the window. You decide to go outside and see if you can figure out where you are. Avoiding the broken glass, you step onto the sill and outside, rustling some plants that have grown wild in the area. It's cool outside, and damp. Probably morning. You're in the parking lot of... Gaijus, I guess? I don't know. Gaijus cryo facility? But everything looks disused and in disrepair. Plants have pushed their way through the pavement and over the facility. Worst of all, nothing looks familiar. You don't remember this place, or even who you are. Your frustration mounts, but you catch it and put it in check. Might as well take a look around. Okay. Here's the map screen. Alright, so I'm at the... Gyges, Gyges, whatever the hell that is, how we pronounce it, at the cryo facility. Okay, again, it's probably overwhelming, there's a lot of stuff on screen, don't worry about it yet. So here's what I'm going to do. The Dogman Corpse is still here, so I'm going to open up the item screen. Alright, here it is. And now I'm going to do some crafting. So here's the crafting screen. That's what all these big buttons are, they're different screens, medical screen, blah blah blah. Actually, you know what? I'm currently bleeding because of the attack, so actually let me take care of my bleeding first. So, I am going to... I'm going to take my hospital gown. Here's where you put the stuff you want to craft. Like, here's your ingredients. So this is your... This is your available ingredients. This is where you want to actually do something with the ingredients. And this is the end result down here. So I'm going to take my hospital gown, and I'm going to take the shards, which will allow me to cut it up. Actually, I don't think I need the shards, do I? No, no. Yeah, if I just put the hospital gown up here, I can craft five dirty rags and five handfuls of string. Woohoo! So now I'm literally naked. However, now that I have rags, I can actually put that on myself in the medical screen. There we go. A nice dirty rag to give me give me wonderful infections. Oh well. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the crafting screen and I'm going to do something with this dogman corpse. Okay, how do I do this? I think I think I need the dogman corpse shards. This will allow me to make meat. However, I think if I use the trapping skill, yes, <laughs> with the trapping skill, I can make a dogman fur coat to replace the hospital gown that I just tore up, which makes me looks makes me look awesome. All right, so let's make all this. I've got like a bajillion pounds of meat and a freaking awesome coat. Watch this. Oh yeah. I am a naked man with nothing but a dogman fur coat and some shards of glass in my hand. Because I'm just that awesome. Okay. 
You know what? I think I can make a little shiv here. If I use the dirty rags with it. Yeah, I can make a glass shiv. It's a little bit better than just a raw shard of glass. At least I can use it without cutting my own hands, I guess. Let's go ahead and put that in. Put it in. There we go. <laughs> it's actually inefficient, because now they don't stack. Which means I'm using up both my hands, but oh well. Okay. And unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to put this meat. You know what? I'm just going to take the biggest piece. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to put the meat except my hands. And I want one weapon in one of my hands, so I'm a naked man in nothing but a dogman fur coat with a glass shiv in one hand and a huge chunk of meat in the other. I'm pretty badass. I mean, come on. Okay, so my next goal is going to be try to find the stuff to make a fire so that I can actually cook this meat so that I can hopefully preserve it because it will spoil. And pretty quickly, too. God, I look awesome. Okay. So it is called Neo Scavenger. And as the name implies, scavenging is extremely important. That's the main way that you actually get stuff. Scavenging takes up one movement point, and as you see up here in the top left, I have 3.85 out of 4. So basically doing one big action like scavenging or moving one tile will take one point. And doing small stuff like crafting will take up just a little bit, so that's why it's gone down from 4 to 3.85 is because of the crafting I just did. So let's go ahead and scavenge this place. Right, so I'm going to scavenge the cryo facility. And I'm going to use my eagle eye ability to help me out. You found something. Okay. Okay, so I found the Ravager Multi-Tool Pocket Knife. So that's obviously way better than a stupid glass shiv, so let's take that instead. And I'll just leave that piece of crap there. Okay. So I just scavenged. Took up one movement point. I believe it alerted nearby enemies, if there are any, as well. Which isn't good, but oh well. Okay, so again, next goal, find the stuff to make a fire so I can hopefully cook this meat, come back, and hopefully cook it all. And and I especially need storage stuff, so I need a source of fire, and I need storage stuff. I need a backpack, I need bags. Uh, you can even have a vehicle in this game. Which, at the moment, the only type of vehicles I've actually seen are shopping carts and sleds. Both are actually pretty damn effective. So let's go around. So you see here, this one has... Well, let's just move over. So you see these tiles, they have icons on them. So that, uh... The, the, the box icon just means that there's items on the ground. In this case, ooh! See, here we go. Here's a bunch of berries. So that's what's just sitting on the ground. There's some stones that I don't care about. There's some water in the marsh. Um, I could drink one. It's, it's a weird inventory system. The water is kind of held in the container of the marsh, so you kind of got to empty it out. It's really weird. And let's drink it. Okay. If I had bottles of water, I could actually store this, but I can't. And you can see here, these berries are poisonous. So if I didn't have the botany skill, I wouldn't be able to know that. However, these are edible. So let's go ahead and... Actually, I don't even think I need to eat. Eh, whatever. I'm going to eat anyway. What's the icon? Is this one? Yeah, this cursor automatically uses it. Just holding down the 2 button to automatically use stuff. Switches to different cursors. <sighs> okay. So those are items that were just on the ground. However, I can also scavenge if I wanted to. <laughs> scavenge an open field. So in some places, you can use your botany skill to scavenge for berries and whatnot. But since I'm actually not hungry at the moment, I actually don't care. Uh, how do I leave? I can I can leave, right? What is this gonna leave? Okay, there we go. So let's just try to find stuff. Alright, I'm out of movements, so I gotta end my turn and hope no enemies come up to me. Good they didn't. Time of day is dawn. Alright. Not finding anything. Really, really not finding anything. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. As you approach the town, there is no sign of activity. 
Buildings stand in ruin. Vehicles are overturned and blackened with fire. Explosion marks radiate outward from walls and pavement. In the distance, strange-looking creatures circle in the sky like monstrous leathery vultures. The world has drastically changed from what you knew. Some sort of cataclysm has befallen Earth, returning mankind to the Dark Ages. And along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers. You decide to look around and scavenge what you can from the ruins. Okay, so there are quite a few places here. Uh, let's see if there's any items on the ground. Assorted small parts and a handful of small twigs and bark. Wonderful. Let's scavenge. Okay. So the stuff you put down here affects these bars here. This one is the chance of loot. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that one's a chance of loot. Safety is a chance of getting hurt, so you want that to be as high as possible. And sneak is... Well, how good you're sneaking. See, Strong says, scavenge brutishly. So if I use my ability to do that, I'm going to have a higher chance of getting loot. However, my safety is going to go down because I'm scavenging brutishly. And of course, my sneak is going to go down because I'm making a lot of noise. But I'm going to do it anyway. Ooh, you found something. I just found a lot of things. Holy crap. Okay. Now I'm in business. Olive colored hoodie. Sweet. I'll put that on. Yeah, you can wear many, many layers of clothes, as you can see. And some shorts. Okay. Well, I don't quite look as badass as I did before. A naked man in a dogman fur coat, but I'm pretty cool. Holy shit, I am a lucky man. I just found two boots. And one is actually a right one, and one is a left one. That does not happen often. Sometimes you just find one, or you find two, but they're both for your left foot or your right foot. Which is kind of awkward. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Saltine crackers, tarp. Okay, so here's my first actual storage container. It's this uh, disposable plastic shopping bag, which has a decent amount of storage space. Uh, unfortunately, its condition is 11%, which means it's going to fall apart very soon, but might as well use it for as long as I can. Okay, what do I put in it? Well, I definitely want food. Hmm... Water's actually low priority, to be honest, because it is so easy to find water in the environment. So I'm actually not going to take that. I'll take the tarp, though. Could make some stuff out of that. Don't need a shard. I've got my multi-tool. Pebbles, broken bottle. I'll take some assorted small parts. Might come in handy. Okay. So let's keep scavenging. Again, I'm trying to find... I'm trying to find something like a lighter, so I can actually make fire. So that I can cook this meat, because it's going to go bad very soon. In fact, I'm almost certainly... It's almost certainly going to go bad before I can do anything with it. What the fuck is... Jesus. Okay, that's an Enfield horror. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go the other way now. Bye! Not having none of that. Nope. I hope it's not tracking me. By the way, there's red marks on the ground. Those are my tracks being left behind. You can actually hide your tracks. In other words, it could very easily track me. Because I don't want to stop to actually hide my tracks. Okay. Let's get me just saying, and he's strong again. What did I get? Well, another shopping bag. It's also in shitty condition, but it is another shopping bag. So, oh, that's interesting. Hmm, having the dogman fur coat actually covers up the storage part of my hoodie. You notice there's, I can store stuff here, but when I put it on, I can't. Hmm. Anyway. Alright, let's put this in my hand and put the meat in there. Some pieces of an old newspaper. A game of drones. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what that's a reference to. To support the growing role of unmanned aerial vehicles in the U.S. military, Camp Grayling 
will be expanding its UAV maintenance and operations facilities. Planned construction includes three new hangars, an array of eight landing pads and refueling pipeline, all connected via short-length runways. Facilities for support personnel are also in the works. Local engineering firm Stansted Automated has been contracted to install an optical and radio registration system for automated vehicle guidance. The system will be one of the first of its kind, allowing both ground and aerial-based unmanned vehicles to navigate the facility without human oversight. Oops, a little bit of backstory here. Oh, I might as well take this stuff. I can always dump it if I don't need it. Although I certainly don't need stones and pebbles. Okay, let's swing around to here. By the way, certain tiles that you go through, such as hills or uh, forests, will actually take more movement points than normal. So that's why I'm kind of going around instead of through. Ooh. It's a stranger. Is the stranger violent? Or not? No way to know. I'm gonna have to end my turn. Let's see if they come closer. Oh god! Okay. Right. Well, this isn't good. This is the encounter screen. Okay, uh... <laughs> I might die here. It's pretty unlikely. But I, I could. Alright, so again, don't be overwhelmed. This is me on the left, this is them on the right, and this is our field of battle, if you will, in the center. So we're in this town. I'm apparently six... My range is six. I'm six, I don't know, units, whatever that is. Six units away from them, which means I'm quite close. The terrain is difficult because it is a town. Okay. Alright, none of us have cover. We are both visible to each other, so... I can't just sneak away because he knows I'm here. They have a crowbar with a strap as their weapon. Which is a lot more effective than my punch because I forgot to switch my weapon. In fact, I'll switch it now. There we go. If you change attack modes during battle, that limits what you can do for that turn. I think it means you can't attack for that turn. But I wasn't close enough to attack anyway, so it didn't matter. Okay, and they're tough and they're barefoot. I'm strong and I'm tough. I could probably win if I fought, maybe. I'm not sure... How a multi-tool blade compares to a crowbar, I would think the crowbar would win just by reach alone. And here's all my options. Hmm. So I could sprint away, but the problem with that is that the train's really difficult, so there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to trip. I'm going to be super nice. I'm going to offer to talk. That didn't work. Oh god, their name is Bad Mother. Their name is Bad Mother. In other words, a bad mother doesn't want to talk. Yeah. Because they just advanced on me from a range of six to three. So we're going to fight. Ooh, Bad Mother charges at player. God damn it. Fuck you. Okay. I could probably win. I could probably win. They're tough, but they're also barefoot and vulnerable. I'm tough, and I'm strong. But do I want to? Hmm. No, I'm gonna sprint. Okay. Um. Bad Mother dodges player's attack. Wait, what? I didn't even attack. Dodging out of the way, okay. Player sprints away from the fray. Okay, good. So now I've advanced to a range of six, which means now we're out of actual melee range. So I'm going to keep running. Yeah, let's keep running. Okay, it's working. Now I'm at a range of seven. Let's sprint away again. Range of nine. Excellent. Let's keep sprinting. Range of 13. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to try to actually retreat, which has a chance that I'm actually going to break out of the encounter. And it worked. Okay. <sighs> right. I'm not any closer to being able to actually make a fire, which means I'm pretty sure this meat's gonna spoil. And they're probably gonna come after me. Oh, look, there's another person. 
Wonderful. Don't come to me. Good. Okay. Alright, let's scavenge this place. Ooh, there's two places. Abandoned house and abandoned mobile home. Hmm. Blue jeans? Which one do I want more? Well, this one has more storage space. It's in worse condition, but I prefer the storage space. This one's also probably more warming. But I'm doing fine on temperature. You want your outdoor temperature here to be right about the center. If it's too high, that means you're going to be overheated, and if it's too low, that means you're going to be freezing to death. Oh my god. Some bullets worth $250. It's worth mentioning that I'm not sure how important money actually is, because I've never gotten to a point where I can actually sell anything. But yeah, bullets are rare. What kind of bullets are they, though? I'm not sure if this game has calibers and, you know, how specific it gets with the ammo, or if it's just generic ammo. i shove those in my pocket. <laughs> Another shoe, I don't need it. Yeah, let's put on some more layers here. And a shirt. I've got like four layers on, that's fine. Ooh! A lighter! Now I can make a fire! Now I can cook the meat! Okay. Sweet. That's actually really lucky. Take some dirty rags so I can heal any wounds that I might get. Okay. Excellent. Oh, I meant to switch this. Take this stuff back. Alright, I hope I have enough time. So I'm going to need wood to make a fire. Um, shit, how do I do this? Um. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work out, but we're about to find out. Okay, is my meat spoiled? Nope, still good. Right, I can make a fire here, but the problem is, the meat is actually here. Um, I don't know if I can just, like, leave the fire on the ground? We're about to find out, but anyway. Alright, so crafting screen. Now I've got this wood here. This wood came from simply being in a forest tile. You can see here. The trees have... Well, the trees are filled with wood. You can empty it out. Again, awkward inventory system. But here it all is. So... Take some medium branches, plus my lighter, plus some twigs, and you have a fire. This cycles through the different kind of things you can make with the same ingredients, so I can make a big fire, or I can make a smaller fire. No, sorry, this isn't a big fire, it's a medium campfire. So let's go ahead and make that. Okay. I think that's just an item on the ground, right? Okay, it's just on the ground. I don't know how long it lasts, but I might as well cook my current meat while I have it. Okay, and I believe I need a stick to cook it on. Yeah, here we go. Medium chunk of meat cooked. So putting the piece of meat on the stick and cooking it over the campfire. Okay, at least I got one piece cooked, and hopefully I can cook the rest. So let's go grab it. Actually, maybe I should dump the stuff I don't need. I'm gonna need all the yeah. I'm gonna need all the store. Oh shit, no. I'm gonna need all the storage room. So. Hope nobody comes to steal it. Nah, they won't have time. Okay. All this meat that I just left lying on the ground is apparently still good, thankfully. Now let's take as much as I can. Alright, that's it. Should be enough meat to last me a lifetime, I would think. Alright, let's cook some meat. I 
have no idea how long cooked meat lasts, by the way. I'm sure it's longer than raw meat. That's pretty much guaranteed. But I know it won't last forever. I'm not entirely sure. I wonder if there's even, like, long-term food preservation of meat in the game. What would you do for that? I have no idea. But, anyway. Okay, so I think I just need to keep pressing this. Yep. Oh crap, I ran out of moves. Okay. Gotta end my turn. And let's do it again. Okay. And now I have shit tons of cooked meat. Let's see exactly how much this actually will feed me. So there's my hunger meter. Let's eat a big one. Ooh, pretty good. Let's eat a small one. Oh, I think it was actually maxed before. So I think I just wasted that, but anyway. Okay, excellent. Excellent. God, do I look like a crazy person or what? I have... <laughs> I have two disposable plastic shopping bags full of cooked meat. That's pretty weird. Okay, I really need a vehicle. Hmm. Honestly, I don't need this much meat. I really don't need this much meat. What do I want more, though? The meat or the tarp? The meat's more important, no doubt about that. I need rags for wounds. Saltine crackers don't even matter now that I have this much meat. So I'll take the bullets, because they're tiny. I absolutely need the lighter. Yeah, that's pretty good. I guess I will take the saltines, since I have room. Okay, pretty damn happy about that. Okay, well, I've gotten over the hump. I mean, I have a good amount of food, and... I also have plenty of clothes, because that's actually the first thing you usually have to worry about. Is getting clothes and finding shelter, because... You, like, so many times when you first start this game, you're going to freeze to death. It's really easy to freeze to death. Because you only have a hospital gown on. And it's usually really cold. Um, so the only reason I was able to avoid that so easily is just because of the Dogman encounter. But if you don't get that, you know, if you don't get its its coat, then you're going to need to find some clothes pretty quickly, or that is going to be the first thing that's going to kill you. So let's just head off. I'm good. Oh, God. I think I'm going to go into the mountains away from them. Let's hide. Oh, God. They just fought each other. The, the strangers just fought each other. Holy shit, look at this. I, I can't even go up anymore, but... <laughs> strangers lower my leg was battered. Bruised, gets up, gets up. Shredded. Oh, my God. Stranger shredded stranger's head with a meat cleaver. Stranger shredded stranger's lower left leg with a meat cleaver. Cleaver. Stranger cut stranger's lower right leg with a meat cleaver. Ow. I'm gonna run now over the hills. Yeah. Yeah, so you see that going into the hills actually cost me two movement points instead of one. Oh god. That's not good. I'm going to scavenge this anyway. Oh, it's just a stretch of forest. The only thing I'm going to get from this is food, which I really don't need. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Oh, shit, I accidentally did it anyway. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, that's a recipe. Don't need it. 
I'll drink some water, sure. This is another case where the botany skill comes in handy. Poisonous death cap. If you eat that, you're dead. So let's not. These, however, are Agiricus Bisporus. Edible. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is move. Oh god, there's so many freaking people. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hide. All right, seems to have worked. Let's scavenge. I really need a vehicle, strong, and I'm gonna use my lighter to both increase my chance of finding loot. So yeah, they have various effects. Like you can see, strong increases loot chance, but lowers safety and sneak. However, the lighter increases loot chance, and it increases safety, but of course also lowers sneak because you're more visible. So they they behave pretty much as you'd expect them to. Rifle scope with strap. Some more bullets, okay. Well, sorry, saltines, but I'm going to eat you. Mm, let's put the strap on my neck. On my neck. There we go. So that's going under my, like, bonus things here. I'm not entirely sure what having a magnifying optics equipped thing actually does. Maybe it increases my visibility? Or something? I don't know. Anyway. Right boot. 60%. Mm, it's actually a lower percentage than that, so that's not good. I have two right shoes here. 40% and a 60%. None of which are better than my current ones, so let's leave that. Let's put in some more layers, why not? Seriously, how many layers of stuff do I have on? Five. Damn. Be interesting to walk around with five shirts on. I kind of want to just wait for them to leave. I don't think I can actually spy on a creature that's not in a hex next to me. Doesn't seem so. Yeah, I can only spy one hex over. I've actually never used that before. What the hell? There's a bottle of water on the ground in this hex. I'll take it. Huh. Alright, let's try spying. Um, it doesn't appear to work. Hmm. I don't get it. That's the first time I've actually ever tried to use it. Anyway, I'm just going to run away. I was going to hide, but I don't feel like it. Ooh, is it getting dark? It's dusk. Yep. When nighttime comes around, your visibility is extremely low. Some water on the ground. So as you can see, finding water is really not much of an issue. Oh, fuck. I might have fought a dogman before, but in that encounter, you're guaranteed to win. This one, not so much. Fuck, I'm gonna run. Okay, I'm in the forest. Maybe that'll make me hard to see. I hope. Please don't come to me. Please don't come to me. I don't see it. That's good. I think I'm okay. Let's take a look at the map. Alright, so there's where I started. I'm kind of going towards the right. I'm gonna keep going towards the right. And I'm in the hills. Hmm. Oh, fuck, it's following me. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, well, I'll deal with that in a second. As night falls, you notice there's a bright glow coming from the east, easily visible through the treetops. It's no guarantee, but it could be a sign of civilization. Maybe even a lead on where you are, or who. 
and if nothing else, is as good a landmark to strike towards as any. Oh no! Fuck. Okay, um... Right, well that's the glow. So that's why I was heading towards the right, because I know I'm going to end up going there anyway. That's part of the main quest. So, yeah, that's my goal. Go towards the glow, so basically go to the right. However, I have another problem. The dogman was following my tracks. And now it's nighttime, so I can't even see one fucking tile behind me, and I can only move once. Yeah. I'm gonna hide in the city. If I can make it there without dying. Please, dogman, please, dogman, please, dogman, don't come to me. Oh, fuck. My shopping bag fell apart. Now all of my beautiful meat has fallen upon the ground. Okay. I am going to hide. Maybe I should just make camp and sleep. I'm not sure if camping counts as hiding. I have no idea. See, I can sleep inside of the building. Gives me decent shelter. Yeah, should be should be safe, right? Let's sleep through the night. <laughs> wait, what the? Wait, what? Hold, hold on. What? Why does it say player's unconscious? Is that what it says when you sleep? You're unconscious. And also, why does it say player has fallen to the ground and must regain footing to continue? I don't understand. I pressed sleep and somehow I went unconscious and then fell to the ground. What, did I fucking pass out or something? <laughs> It sounds like I pressed a button on my back while I was standing up that said, go to sleep, and I just, like, tumbled over. Jesus. Okay, well, I... I'm an insomniac, or whatever that ability or trait was called, so I have trouble sleeping, so yeah, it's gonna be an issue. I'm well-rested at the moment, but it's gonna quickly go down to another less optimal state. So, let's try to sleep again. Whoa, what the fuck is this? Oh, god damn it, there's somebody here. Oh, oh, wait, it's actually not that big of a deal. Okay. Let's see what happened first. Oh, you piece of shit. Stranger woke up player while stealing medium chunk of meat. You piece of fucking shit. Nobody steals my meat. <clears throat> I worked hard for that meat. I killed the fucking dog man, and I cut the meat out of him, and then I found a lighter, and then I made a fire, and then I cooked it myself, and I carried it with me in disposable shopping bags. Nobody steals my meat. Let's take a look at this person. This person only has the punch available. Although the image makes it, looks like they have, makes it look like they have a bow or something. But they're only using their fists at the moment. They're tough, which is bad for me, but they're also barefoot and blind. I'm not sure if blind actually means literally blind, like you might think, because I find my I found myself having the blind trade many times. I think it might just mean poor visibility because of the nighttime or something. I don't think it literally means blind. It, it might, but I don't think so. Anyway, they are visible, but I'm not. In other words, I could simply retreat and they would never know I was here. But, they have my meat. So I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. I'm gonna sneak towards them. Move one space closer. Okay, I'm still not visible. Wait a minute. That's weird. Stranger takes cover from player, but I wasn't visible, and I'm still not visible. So how did the stranger know I was there? I don't get it, but whatever. 
Anyway, now they've got stones, which is still nothing compared to my Ravager multi-tool pocket knife. Sneak some more. There we go. Oh, I'm visible. God damn it. <laughs> okay, stranger searches for player. Player sneaks towards stranger, so now I'm visible. That's not good. Okay. I think I'm going to demand target surrender. Demand that opponent drop all items and walk away. Give me my meat. Oh. I demanded surrender and the stranger is now charging at me. I can headbutt. I think I'm going to headbutt this piece of shit. Fuck you. Oh, it worked. Player headbutts, bad mother. Bad mother's upper chest was pelted. Bad mother needs a moment to recover before acting again. And then bad mother agrees to surrender to player. Good. I got my meat back and I got the crude bow. <laughs> like I said, nobody steals my meat. God, they even gave me their pants. <laughs> does that mean they does that mean they ran away naked? I feel kinda bad. It's a soup can, but it has no soup in it, so it's crap. Hmm. Khaki cargo shorts. Same as what I have. However, it's in much better condition, so let's go ahead and take it. Empty this out. Okay. Cornicola plastic bottle. I'll drink that. <laughs> Player drinks some cornicola soda. Taste the corny refreshment. Player is on a caffeine high. Player is starting to sweat. Sweet. Let's drink some more. Seems to be having good effects on my health. <laughs> I'm on a caffeine high and I'm sweating. Ah. Alright, what about this crude bow? How do I make arrows? I wonder if there's something you have to find or if you can actually make them. How would you do it, though? Well, there's three parts to an arrow, right? There's the shaft, there's the tip, and then there's the thingy on the back end, whatever it's called. The feathery thingamajig. So the shaft I could simply carve out of wood, I suppose. Hmm, what can I use for the tip? <laughs> can you make glass-tipped arrows? That seems pretty unlikely. Maybe. How would you attach it, though? And then what would I do for the tail end? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, sweet. I can actually store it on my back. Okay, excellent. That slot there is for the... For the arrows, obviously. Right, well, I still need somewhere to shove my meat. Also, my other disposable shopping bag is just about to fall apart. It's got one... Its condition is 1.9%, which is terrible. Hmm. I need storage. Bad. Since I'm sweating, should I take off clothes? Well, I don't even have anywhere to put my clothes, so... Yeah, that's not gonna work. I don't really just want to leave them behind. <sighs> if I leave this place, someone else might steal my meat. Okay, I'm gonna be a little bit careful and just preemptively eat one. So even if people steal everything else, at least I got some of it. What what the hell? 
Am I fighting against a question mark? What is this? Search? I don't know what that was. And now I'm crashing. Sure wish I could see something. Oh, here we go. Oh god, my other shopping bag just fell apart. Fuck. I need storage. I need my freaking meat. <laughs> it's just sitting there on the ground. Alright, let's see if I can find something in this town. Please, 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 please. Ooh. Ooh, 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 yes. Okay, here we go. Big ol' box. <laughs> Some whiskey. Holy shit, there's a lot of whiskey in there. Apparently it's worth $200, too. Usually there's either nothing in them or just, like, water. I will gladly take that. And this shopping bag's at 85%. Okay, I don't believe I can put this as my backpack. No, I've got to hold the box, but I can put the disposable shopping bag as my backpack, so that's excellent. Okay. Okay, now let's go back for my meat. God damn it. Did that naked piece of shit come back and steal my meat? You fucker. Where are you? He's gotta be nearby. Nah, forget it. It's not worth it. Hmm. Digital water tester. Charges zero. Okay, so what do I charge it up with? Obviously, it doesn't work at the moment. Eh, I'll keep it. Hmm. I just had a thought. Can I sterilize my... Where are they at? Yeah, can I sterilize my dirty rags? With whiskey? I can! Oh, oh. Let's do it. Okay, how many do I want? I'll go for five. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if I have more than five separate wounds on me at any one time... I've got issues. I'm not sure what I could do with the rest of it. I wonder if that's the only thing it's good for, other than, of course, drinking. Could be a pain reliever, I suppose. Ooh. Edible berries. Another shopping bag. It only takes up one slot. So, I might as well keep it. They have a very big tendency to fall apart. As you saw. Let's grab into this place. Hmm. Don't need another multi tool. Guess I'll keep the tarp. You can use that, by the way, to make shelter. Yeah, so if you're in a place, like if you're in the woods or something and you want to make a shelter, you can combine the tarp with pieces of wood and I think some string. And you can make like a lean-to or something like that. Oh, fuck. 
It's a melon head. As far as I can tell, melon heads are basically zombie type things. They're creepy. They're not very strong, but they're creepy. And they- oh god! Yeah, okay, we're leaving. Bye. I think I'm just- I don't even want to scavenge this place. Oh wait, I can't even scavenge it. <gasps> yes! Yes! Okay. This is my first vehicle. It is a thing of beauty. It's not in very good condition, 33%, but look at all the storage space it has. Okay. Um, before I take it, though, let me see if I can craft something. Um, okay, so I can put a strap on it to make it easier to pull. How do I do that? I think I need string. Yeah, I need string. Okay, I need to take something apart. Alright, let's see. Alright, well, I'm going to take apart this Grayling Community College t-shirt. I don't need that many shirts. Okay, string plus this. Uh, I think I need medium strings. Let's do that. Mm, I think I need more string. Just throw stuff in here, make sure I'm not missing something. No, I need more string. Um, do I want to tear up another shirt? Yeah, I've got enough shirts, whatever. Let's see if this is enough. If it's not, I'm going to be very sad because I just tore up two of my shirts. Yes, here we go. Plastic sled with strap. So I think that means it's going to not burden me as much. Okay, sweet. Now let's go plop that into vehicles. Boom. Of course, now I can't run in combat because, you know, I'm pulling a gigantic sled full of a bunch of stuff. So it's got some negatives, of course, but look at all that storage space. That is beautiful. That means I can take everything with me. Just shove it all in. So, let's take all of this. Now, I'm gonna keep running. As far away from the Enfield Horror that's probably tracking me <clears throat> as possible. I have no idea how powerful they are, but I'm assuming very. Okay, so how am I doing? I need to sleep. I need a drink. And I'm good on food. Okay, it doesn't seem to be tracking me. Hmm. Whoa. Some tools. Metal saucepan, I could use that to boil water and whatnot, and I'm not sure what to do with a monkey wrench, but I'm sure that'll come in handy. Shoving that in my vehicle. Okay, I need a source of water. Need to sleep. Let's use my botany skill to get some berries and whatnot. There we go. And those are poisonous. These are not, though. Of course, that uh, helps a little bit with my thirst as well, since, of course, berries and most food have a bit of water. I suppose I could make a shelter here if I wanted to. Now, I'll wait till night time to sleep. I should probably cover my tracks at some point here. I'm creating a really long line of tracks. I don't think that's good. 
I'll do it after I scavenge. Oh, more plastic sheds. Ooh, this plastic shed's actually... Did I just say shed? I did say shed. Sled. This plastic sled is actually better than the one I have. Don't need two tarps. Oh, I can actually stack them. Okay, cool. Thirty rags. Don't need more. Put on another community college t-shirt. Okay. Right, this one... This one is in way better condition. 80% compared to 33. So... What I'm going to do is deconstruct this one. I'm going to take my string back. I'm going to take the new one. String. Craft that. Let's put the new one for my vehicle and let's shove everything back in here. I don't need the hoodie. Actually, I might as well tear it apart. I could use some string. Yeah, let's tear it apart. Okay. Cool. Good to go. Alright, now I'm going to hide my tracks. There we go. Oh, shit. Hmm. Stranger. Doesn't appear to wield a weapon. I don't actually have a good weapon myself, though. So I'm not really confident about going into battle. I'm just gonna dodge around him. Player is tired. Okay, I definitely need to sleep. And stranger's running away. That's good. Hello. I was just speaking about my lack of weaponry. Crowbar with strap. Some pieces of an old newspaper. Tunnel people. The second housing collapse in as many years. Or, wait, in as many years. I don't understand what that means. The second housing collapse in as many years sends people flocking to flood tunnels for shelter. Record numbers of beleaguered mortgagers are seeking shelter anywhere they can find it. Many are turning to ad hoc communities centered around abandoned infrastructure, including flood tunnels, metro stations, and transfer stations. Yep, every newspaper you find is just a little... a little hint at how everything went wrong. Alright, well, let's replace my multi-tool pocket knife with a crowbar. Seems more effective. Of course, I want to keep this thing for cutting up and whatnot. It is a multi-tool. Very valuable for crafting. And I can even use it to help me find loot. My sneak is complete crap, but it's pretty safe and I'm pretty much guaranteed to find something. <laughs> Yet another plastic sled. This one is slightly better than my current one, but I don't care enough. It's like 6%. Whatever. I'm probably going to die before my sled falls apart. Let's be honest. Hmm, there's a recipe for a .308 rifle with scope at a strap. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure if you actually need to take these recipes to learn them. Do you have known recipes here? Well, I don't see the one that I just read. Which would suggest you do need to maybe take it. Let's let's find out. Alright, so I'm going to take it. 
And let's look back here. Okay, now it's here. So what if I put it back? Okay, so you just need to take it. You just need to take it once, and then you can put it back, and you learn the recipe. Okay. You know, I should actually reorganize some of this stuff. put this stuff in here. And I want the more commonly accessed items, like water bottles and bandages, to be up here. Oh, fuck, my meat spoiled. Shit. I forgot about my meat. <sighs> well, I am going to be relying on berries. Might as well toss this crap out. <laughs>